Hi, this is Tony Miller, and this is about the, the second of probably eight little shorts that I'm going to prepare for you leading up to Easter. This is my social distancing Bible trivia. Uh, this is, uh, I hope that you find some, some value in them as you, you know, you're sequestered, you're in lockdown, you are, you know, at home or at work or wherever you are and you're, 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 you're looking for things to do. I hope you find that, you know, you study these, these, uh, these questions that we have here and hope your brain is keyed in that you'll answer the questions properly and, and accurately. Next slide. So the social distancing, uh, biblical trivia that I'm, I'm sharing with you. Uh, these seven questions that are leading up to Easter and that last uh, yesterday I did one on the Old Testament and today I'm doing one on the New Testament tomorrow I'll do one on the end times and then I will do you a quiz on uh, on Sunday that'll be a quiz of lesson I've already prepared for you that's already uh, on my channel just think it's a fun thing to do as we're you know biding time and looking for things to do and we're, we're surfing the internet and and many of you are already subscribers to my channel. Many of those are just surfing the internet and finding some things that to to look at. And I, and I hope you enjoy what I've prepared for you. Again, seven questions from the Old Testament. Again, like I said, they're not any gotcha questions. They're just basically some questions are difficult and some are quite easy. Next slide. So as I said yesterday that I, I'm going to give you 10 seconds for each question. I was going to give you 20 and I thought that that's just a little quite long and, and I hope you can uh, lock in, engage and, 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 and answer the questions I'm sharing with you. Amen. Next slide. So again, this is New Testament Biblical, uh, biblical Questions, Bible Questions, and it's got a bit of a challenge not challenging anybody but yourself as well. Amen. Next slide. So the first question, in what city was Jesus born? Now this is this could be a little tricky for some folks because was he born in Jerusalem? Or was he born in Nazareth? Or was he born in, born in Galilee or Bethlehem? It, it, it could trip you up if you're not really sharp. So I'm giving you the 10 seconds to answer this question and think about it. I'm going to move to the next slide and give you the answer. Which one do you think it is? Jerusalem, Nazareth, Galilee, or, or Bethlehem? Next slide. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem. You can find the answer in Luke 2, chapter 1 through 20. that talks about this whole concept of Jesus and where he was born along with his mother and father as a we're looking for a place to to birth this child. Amen. Next slide. So prophecy. So prophecy in Mike, Micah uh, 5 and 2, that it has this prophetic message that, that the prophet Micah had, that for God gave him this word, and he says, You, Bethlehem, Ephraim, Ephraim, you being least among the thousands of little cities in Judah, but out of you, he, Jesus, the Messiah, the one that everyone is looking for, the one that foretold with prophecy for years and hundreds and thousands of years before shall come forth and be born and to me and is to become the ruler of Israel, the king of the Jews. That is the prophecy that was foretold at least seven to 800 years prior to Jesus. Amen, let's move on. Next question. So how old was Jesus when he read from the book of Isaiah in the temple? And we know the story that Jesus as a young man, he entered in the temple and he, and he, and he went to the rack and he pulled up the scroll and, he, and, the, and the scroll was from Isaiah. So that's what it was pronounced with the E, Isaiah's. And here is a young uh, whippersnapper, and he opens up the scroll in the temple, and he reads, what age was he? I think there's only two answers. I know a study in this over the years, and it's 
one or the other, and I hope you have the right answer. Next line. The answer was 12 years old. Now, when I originally had posed this question, I thought it was 13, like the average at the age of the, when they, they have the bar mitzvah, but he was 12. And that was the age when he pulled the scroll in the temple. And those in the temple heard him read from Isaiah's. Next line. So the, in ancient Israel, it was customary in the synagogue for a common Israelite to read from the Torah. And I share with you the Torah is what the Jews have and, and, the, and the, uh, uh, they call the first five books and then we call it the Pentateuch on the Sabbath day. And on this particular day in Nazareth, Jesus, 12 years old, stood up and read and chose Isaiah 61 as his reading portion. And he made an amazing statement that this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears and those who are in the synagogue they heard Jesus who says that I'm that one and he basically dropped the mic after that but the base the, the scripture says the spirit of the Lord is upon me that's the Isaiah 61 because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering sight to the blind, to set liberty to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, Jesus did. And he gave the book. He gave it again to the ministry and he sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fasting on this young man, this anointed man, young man, the Spirit of the Lord was on him. And he basically told him, I'm that Messiah, I'm the one that you all are seeking at 12 years old. Let's move on. So how many books are there in the New Testament? Now this is one of those those questions you learn in Sunday school and I hope you have the answer and I give you some choices is it 25 or 26 or 27 or 28 or even 30 again go back to your Sunday school when you're a child I'm sure you have the answer five four three two one I press the button for the answer next slide the answer is 21, 27, I'm sorry, 27, I apologize, 27, and there's 39 in the Old Testament, which brings it to 66 total books in the Bible, and that's the correct answer is 27, not my arrows, 21, next slide, amen. So in the Gospel of Mark, who does the vir Virgin Mary learn of her pregnancy? That she is that one who will carry the Messiah, the, the one that's foretold of prophecy going all the way back to Genesis in 3 and 15 about the Messiah was going to come to put us back in the relationship with Almighty God. And her and her cousin Elizabeth was going to have the, the forerunner that John the Baptist. So who does Mary learn this from? Five, four. Three. Hope you have the answer. Next slide. Amen. Is the angel Gabriel, the archangel Gabriel? He gives Mary this message, and he also gives the message to Elizabeth as well. Let's move on to our next question. Amen. So, who is the high priest of Jerusalem who put Jesus on trial? So we remember the story that Jesus was with his disciples and the guards and, and Judas Iscariot, he gave them that kiss and uh, uh, to identify that Jesus was the one that they were seeking and they took him and they took him in and then and ultimately the next day he had this, he had this uh, uh, meeting with these uh, priests. And notice that the, 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 the priests, the high priests at that time, that they were all appointed Roman uh, by the Romans, they were not necessarily through the lineage of Aaron. They were chosen, they were puppets in position attached to Rome. So who is the high priest of Jerusalem who put Jesus on trial? 
Hope you have the answer. Next slide. So the answer is Caiaphas. Caiaphas was a high priest at the time. We know it may have been Annas, that may have been one that someone may have said that, but the, the actual high priest was, was Caiaphas. Amen. Next slide. And again, this may be, I think this is our last question. Who takes Jesus' body off the cross? That Jesus is now, has gone to the cross and he had carried that cross on to its location on Golgotha. And there they, 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 they laid him on the cross and, and nailed his, his hands and feet to this cross and beaten and bruised along the way and ultimately he suffered, bled and died and became sin sacrifice for all mankind and the and the, the 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 Roman soldier pierced his side to make sure he was dead and ultimately as sunset was coming they needed to take the body off the cross and, and bury it in a proper burial and who is that one who takes Jesus body off the cross again remember he's also the one that loans Jesus that tomb I hope you have the answer Next slide. Amen. The answer is Joseph of Arimathea. That is the answer to your question. Amen. Next slide. Well, this is the last question. I apologize for that. Who is the first apostle to deny Jesus? So remember that Jesus was again, uh, he was interacting with those apostles. And then an apostle, one of them, uh, ultimately was the one who denied Jesus. So let's move on to that answer. Next slide. That's Peter. And Peter, the, 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 the people said, no, you're the one. Aren't you the one that was with that Jesus? And he said, no, I don't know. I don't know him. And he says, no, I, I, don't, I don't even know that dude. I, I don't know who you're talking about. And he does it three times. Next slide. Matthew 26, 33 through 35, and Peter answered Jesus, though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away again. Peter is speaking to Jesus, and Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you that this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times in verse 35. And Peter said to him, even if I die with you, I will not deny you of course he does amen next slide. so that's our seven questions i hope you got them all right at least got the majority of them right uh they're just basically something that we are sharing with you and hopefully it gives you it stretches your intellect it stretches your biblical knowledge that you have some growth and you learn something valuable to your own understanding and tomorrow I will do a lesson from the end times, seven questions from the end times. And hopefully you'll find some value from them as well. Next slide. And I ask you as well, like I asked you with the lesson yesterday, that if you have some biblical question you always wanted to an answer, send it to me by email or send it to me by the message and I will do my best to answer that question for you. Thank you so much for your time. Amen.